Hello and welcome to another update video about um, Ethereum. Ethereum has um, also gone up a little bit in the last few days, not as much as Bitcoin though. Um, a few things here to mention, obviously after we uh, got into our tar target area here in this larger wave one that was back in November, we have come down in a five wave move uh, to the downside. Well, not necessarily a five wave move, it was a wave A, a B to the upside, and now a wave C to the downside, and that wave C itself consists of five waves, but in um, on a higher level, we are in a wave two correction after we had a wave one. Consequently, the next wave up should be a wave three. So a few good things here on the chart to see. Well, one which, um, well, few good thing, things for further price increases are that we um, have obviously seen here a higher low. Yeah, and we have seen quite a strong support um, here at the uh, target area. So as I said before, we have come into the target area, yeah, and at any point in time, Ethereum could be done with the correction. I think to be fair, that depends now on all the movements in the crypto market and what does Bitcoin do. And um, depending on what Bitcoin does, and we get to that in a minute, we could really have the low in here for Ethereum. And the main reason why I say that is that Ethereum did hit my target area. The target area was defined back in November, it was reached. It is uh, the minimum requirement or the requirement was fulfilled for a wave two correction. I'm very happy with that, yeah. And even though my primary expectation still is that we come down lower here, it doesn't need to happen. And that's what I said many times before that um, chasing the lowest low might not always be successful. And don't get me wrong, it's not confirmed yet that we're going to go up from here, but the low could be in and the chances are not bad in my view, yeah? I would give it even more than 50% now. Yeah, as you can see, it's obviously these turning points are difficult. These turning points are difficult and give you a very, very accurate number from which point I, th I think with a very high probability that the turning point is in and the low is in. Um, at the moment here, until we have passed that turning point, I can only assume and the reason why I'm not much more confident is the price structure. If I look on the four, day ch four hour chart, what it did here from that wave three to that wave four, it just doesn't look very impulsive, yeah? And to assume that we have seen the low, this here would have to be an impulse and what is coming down here would have to be corrective. It doesn't look very impulsive to the upside here, yeah? I have to say that and therefore it is very, uh, it's not very convincing what is coming up here and therefore my primary expectation has to remain that we're coming down lower and especially as long as we are below the 3,430 level, that is that top here, that high, yeah, back in January. As long as we stay below that and as long as we yeah, basically as long as we stay below that, my primary expectation will remain that we come down lower. It might look a bit different uh, if we had a different structure here, something that looks more impulsive, but I have my difficulties to count this as an impulse to the upside. Therefore, I remain skeptical, but it's not a problem. My buy orders were triggered where they should have been triggered. I'm very happy, I'm prepared for any move to the upside. And uh, as I always said, these blue target areas are not there for fun, they are there for entering into positions i from my from my side did actually start to buy earlier already in the 3000s i did start to buy um but um yeah i mean the next wave up should give us prices of at least around six thousand dollars but probably more likely around the eight thousand mark now what can we see here so um this is obviously my primary expectation count here that we are that we have completed the wave four and we might now be in a wave five to the downside yeah with um, this could be something here like a larger one, two or something. But again, you know, this is my primary expectation. Now, what would happen if the low was already in? Now, what would happen? So first of all, one reason why I think the low could be in is if we draw the FIPS here, yeah, you can see that actually that um, the price here yeah, from that low down there at 2,160 to the high and now in that wave down, the price reacted to the 2,289 level, or roughly, yeah. This is the 88.7% FIP level that is for a wave two, actually very, very um, likely. So if I move that to the side, because what that could then be, and I've told you all along that 
uh, when we came up here, yeah, I said that, that even if this here was the peak, you're coming down once more lower. And that was the low here, yeah? That was the low that we've seen. So you could count that as a wave one. You could count that then as a wave two. And that is now fairly likely because we have hit the 88% uh, FIP level. And that is for a wave two, very likely. Now the next wave up could be a wave three. But again, I've got my difficulties to see here um, the impulsiveness in what is currently coming up here. But there you go. Now that wave three should actually move beyond that 3430 level. Yeah, absolutely. It should move beyond that. And if that happens, I think the low was in. Okay. And that could then really take us to new all time highs for Ethereum. And I am, um, that is what I've said along, you know, the cryptos that have reached their target areas, when they have completed the correction, they could move to new all time highs. Yeah, Bitcoin in my view can't, but the altcoins can, the altcoins that have reached their target areas. Now, what, for example, then if, if we take that and continue that and right and, and say, okay, this was a wave one, where could the wave three land? The wave three would land at least by the 1.618 extension. So yeah, pretty much where I did draw it here, around 3,000, well, around $4,000, okay? Wave four might be somewhere here, yes. Um, and wave five might then be higher. Um, this would be, again, to count as a wave one, yeah? To the upside, all of this. After wave one, you get another wave two. So it will look like something like that you get here your higher degree wave one and then you come down in another wave too. So even if you miss the boat here, you will come down once more quite strongly in a wave two. Yeah, that is always what happens. Then you get your wave three, four, five. It's waves within waves, might get a, a bit complex now, but this is what happens. So there will always be another chance to get in, yeah? Um, so you can see that here. Now, and this wave one here, yeah? So the completion of that five wave structure, because I always get asked, do you really think the low could be in for Ethereum if Bitcoin hasn't completed its low yet? Because you might know that my view is that Bitcoin still needs to come down lower. And for Bitcoin, it could be just a little bit of another move up and then down because um, but I talk about that in my Bitcoin videos, won't repeat it all here. But in short, if we break above 46 and K for me, an alternative scenario comes into play and Bitcoin could move all the way up to, um, and that's all based on FIP levels, could move all the way up to 65K, okay, and then would come down. That is then my primary scenario as soon as we break above 46 and a half K. Now, in that case, Bitcoin would make a lower low. It would then come into my yellow target area here. What would Ethereum do? Ethereum, so this would be a wave B, okay? And this top of the wave B at around 65 K would then very much be in line with that top of that wave one for Ethereum. And Ethereum would then also come down when Bitcoin is coming down, yeah? But I think there is a good chance that Ethereum will not make a lower low, but will make a higher low. And that would then be that wave two, yeah? So hope you understand, right? Um, so it is possible that altcoins can start to move to new all-time highs, absolutely. And this hopefully makes you understand that because this was only the wave one then, yeah? And this year, the wave two, which would come down into the region of yeah, maybe, you know, 2,800 again. Bitcoin has then completed its correction. Bitcoin can then start to move up to new all-time highs Ethereum is already further advanced than Bitcoin and will then move up even stronger than Bitcoin. So outperform Bitcoin, move to new all-time highs, while Bitcoin then will also move to new all-time highs. But the thing is that Bitcoin could now in its wave B, first of all, start move, move up, yeah? Come down, make a lower low. Ethereum could make a higher low, meaning the low is in, yeah, potentially, um, makes a higher low. But again, that would be another opportunity to get in, all right? Um, and from there, then they could all move together to new all-time highs. Yeah, so hopefully that made it clear a little bit. Um, so again, there is never a reason to FOMO in. If you miss the boat, don't try to chase it. But at the moment, for me, these are still very attractive prices below $3,000 for Ethereum. But for Ethereum to really confirm that a breakout is happening, we need to break above $3,430. Now, how do the indicators look like currently for Ethereum? What I really want to show you is just the EMA ribbon. Um, we've had a long signal here on the four hour chart. Yeah. So that happened. Yeah. It, um, it broke here. The EMAs did cross. It's only the four hour chart. So bear in mind, it's not too meaningful. Not a long signal yet on the eight hour chart. Uh, but also here, the price has already broken above the eight hour EMA ribbon. Yeah, um, The daily also 
struggling with, with pushing through the EMA ribbon here on the daily. I think when that is happening and you get a, a, a long signal on the daily EMA ribbon, then that could really push the price higher as well. Yeah, so we haven't seen it yet, but um, really the last time we saw a long signal on the EMA ribbon that took Ethereum to new all time highs, absolutely. Yeah. Um, on the daily as well, what we are seeing here is uh, that the RSI is back in the bullish range and the MACD is back, uh, yeah, has made a bullish crossover as well. So it's not looking bad for Ethereum. Um, but as I said, as long as we are below that uh, confirmation breakout level, I remain uh, rather bearish. But, you know, we've hit the target area, everything has been completed. It's just really that level that I'm watching out for. Um, but as you know, I'm prepared for all scenarios. I started to dollar cost average in already. Now that's my view here on Ethereum. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please smash the like button and subscribe. And if you really like the content, maybe check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.